Yogi. Come on. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go sit over there. Hi everyone. Today's pose is Chaturanga Dandasana, better known as the Yogi Push-Up. So this push-up's a little bit different than the traditional kind of military push-up that a lot of people do. This one is really looking at how to use everything in your body without overusing anything. A really important concept in yoga. So in this practice, if we start up in your plank, you have your wrist underneath your shoulders, the feet are about hips width distance apart and parallel. Energize your legs, press back evenly through the inner outer heels until you feel the front of your thighs firming. Draw the navel to the spine. You want to make sure that the belly's awake and alive. You're going to shift the gaze slightly forward. Now, as you come in to Chaturanga Dandasana, shift forward just slightly. Keep the elbows in close to the ribs, and you come down just like a plank, all in one motion. You can come all the way down to, your, to the ground and just take a rest. Okay, so let's take a look at this pose. If you've been doing a lot of exercise classes and you're used to those boot camp type of push-ups, you may notice that the elbows are out high and it's all about the chest. Yeah, you may even see it where they turn the hands in, but it's out here and you're going up and down. In the yogi push-up, we're not really looking towards that. We're looking because what happens when you're doing all of this, it's overdeveloping the trapezius, the tops of the shoulders. Here in the military, you want that. You want to look like the Incredible Hulk, right? You're going into battle. So it's a lot of this work overdeveloping the upper traps. In the yogi push-up, we want to look at developing the entire body. So the elbows stay in close to the ribs, the scapula draws down the back, and you're engaging the mid-back while keeping the traps away from the ears. So not up here pushing up, but drawing in. So just think of the elbows hugging in close to the ribs, your hands flat, and there's a line from the crease of the wrist to the crease of the elbow right up to the shoulder. Elbows hugging in waist drawing in, low belly lifting, staying broad across the collarbones. There's your upper body. The lower body, legs are energized. You're pressing back evenly through the inner outer heels, really using a full body. Now, if you need to build up to this, some of the things you can do, grab a strap if you have it. This will help support the upper body. So I'm gonna take uh, the strap, you're gonna have to play around with the distance of the strap, but I'm gonna bring the strap just above my elbows. I have the little buckle in the middle so it's not hitting me. I'm gonna come in now, remember I showed you these arms like this, and you can see the strap is right at what I call the bro strap or the bra strap. Your guy is the bro strap, maybe if you're gal, it's the bra, bra strap. But you're gonna hug it in, the elbows hug in, your hands are like, if you're in London, and you're, if you've ever seen the the police, they have the elbows in and they twirl that little thing. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Now you'll come back up. You'll come into your plank, you'll shift forward, and now guess what? You've got this little hammock now to help support you so you can align your upper body and you can energize the legs. So there's one option to help build the strength in the upper body. Now if you have trouble keeping the legs energized, or you find that the hips tend to sag. So a common misalignment is the sagging of the hips or the piking of the hips. So the tailbone's lengthening back, the low belly's drawing in, and the heels are pressing back. You can take a block, place it at the tops of the thighs, right at the top of the thighs. Bring your wrist underneath your shoulders. You've got your hammock here. Shift forward slightly. Hug the elbows in, mm -hmm. and now press back actively through the inner outer heel. With this little support, it gives you time to truly align your body, to keep the legs alive, and to feel the strength and the alignment of Chaturanga Dandasana. Now, again, for a lot of folks, there's a lot of misalignment that happens. Sometimes people are piking. They're coming down and they've got this big pike with your hips way up in the air or they're sagging and slumping the low back. So remember, we're keeping the pelvis neutral. 
You want to really draw in from the lower belly and lengthen the tailbone back towards your heels when you come down. So as you shift forward, hug in the elbows. Bring the belly to the thigh and belly in towards the spine. Press back through the heels. Mm -hmm. And then bring it back up. Okay, it's a very strong pose. Takes a lot of effort, a lot of practice. So remember, if you've got tender wrist, you can use fist instead. That works for some, maybe on the forearms, or you can use the props. Chaturanga Dandasana, your yogi play.